right. So okay. tonight we're grilling up some steaks. Uh, we've got hanger steak on the grill. Uh, flat iron, plank steak would absolutely work. Those are kind of one and the same. We didn't have that option. They were out of it when we uh, wanted to get that. So our good friends at Maine Meat hooked us up with hanger steak, which is my favorite cut of all time. So I feel pretty lucky about that. And that's basically the, the, the muscles in the abdomen of the cow, or the bull, I should say. It's absolutely fantastic, delicious, really tender. And it's a good substitute if you can't find flat iron or skirt steak. But those are a little, usually a little easier to find. Uh, we've got a good marinade on this. That's a green chimichurri. But the real star of the show is the other chimichurri, which is a red chimichurri, which uh, you could put on anything. Uh, it would even be good on cardboard. Yeah, it's that good. It's a little addictive, so be warned. Um, as a matter of fact, I can go over the ingredients with you. It's pretty simple to make. It's a cup of parsley, a half cup of olive oil, a quarter cup of red wine vinegar, two tablespoons of oregano, a tablespoon of the chipotle and adobo, which is this little can. It's almost, it's like a sauce. It gives a really lovely smoky note. Speaking of smoke, a tablespoon of smoked paprika, a half tablespoon of red pepper flakes. You could add more if you want it really spicy. We just like a little bit of heat and three cloves of garlic. Puree it, uh, not, not real fine, but just a little loose, almost like a pesto consistency. And you can put that on steak, chicken, again, cardboard. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> that would also be good on pork. And you could probably do it on heavier fish like salmon, maybe. It has, it, again, this beautiful, spicy, smoky notes. Absolutely fantastic. So we're back in from the grill and we have our meal plated. We have some flour tortillas here. Of course, the grilled hanger steak and what we feel is the star of the show, the red chimichurri. Again, you can put that on anything, it'll be dynamite. Some fresh oregano. Uh, one of our favorite cheeses is a feta cheese uh, that we absolutely love and maybe are a little addicted to. Uh, we're doing a little pantry shopping, but we thought it would be a really nice combination with this. And some lime here, just for a little acidity to kind of cut through the fat and the richness of the dish. Sort of a poor man's taco, if there is such a thing. I don't know. Sounds really good. We think it's going to be delicious. It probably will be. So to that point, no good meal, I think, is complete without a really good bottle of wine. And that's where this gem of Chianti comes in handy. This is from La Lostra. They're a winery just outside of Siena or in the confines of Siena, which is the southernmost part of the Chianti region. A beautiful property. They're an agriturismo, so not only are they farmers and they grow basically a lot of their own food, olive trees, clearly grapes, but it's also a place you can stay, they cook for you, and it's a really great way to connect with the countryside. Uh, it's been one of my favorite properties for I don't even know how long at this point. Chianti, if you're not familiar or a little unfamiliar with it or uninitiated with Chianti, it's a region between Florence and Siena, and that's central Tuscany, and that's the area known as Chianti. So to be called Chianti, you've got to be from that region, but you also have to follow some rules, and really it's about making a high quality wine. Nobody wants a poor quality wine. If you make poor quality wine and it's named after the region, guess what? The reputation's not so good. So Chianti has these strict guidelines. Has to sort of that whole, whole quality point and that following of tradition, the main grape and the main player behind Chianti is called Sangiovese. So it's a lovely grape, it's age-worthy, it's incredibly complex. It offers up beautiful notes of like black cherry, sometimes sour cherry, a little spice, some dried herbs, a little tobacco from time to time, and cocoa powder. Not that it's overly bitter, but you'll get those subtle notes on the finish. And when they're really well made, it creates this beautiful harmony on the palate. Uh, Chianti has to be blended though. It's not just one grape. There are, I believe, 23 varietals that are now allowed. You don't have to remember any of that. Typically, it is mostly red uh, grapes that are blended in, but they're allowed to put a little white in here from time to time. That depends on the winemaker, what the harvest provided, all that fun stuff. But getting back to this wine, lovely medium weight Chianti, not real heavy, but don't let that fool you. It is not a wimpy wine. It's got a really good presence on the palate, and I can't tell you how good Chianti is with grilled red meat. Uh, if you're into food at all, and I hope you are since you're watching this, uh, one of the most famous dishes from this region is Bisteca Fiorentina, which is a giant steak, the Fred Flintstone size. It's meant to feed the family. 
It's grilled and I mean barely grilled. It's got a squeeze of lemon juice on it, fresh arugula, some olive oil, and they cut into it and serve and sit around the table and eat to their heart's content and they have Chianti with it. It loves red meat, it loves cured meats. It's one of my favorite wines for things off the grill for the summer. There are other Chiantis that are more full bodied, but I like this when we move into warmer weather. It's still, again, medium bodied, not real heavy, but certainly not wimpy. I think you'll find this to be quite a delight. And I think that's all I got on the wine. So I feel like we're missing something. That's my terrible segue into my next joke. We need some music to go with all of this. So, may I? Thank you. Full disclosure, The Police, one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, it's Sting and two other guys. Kidding. <laughs> uh, an absolutely dynamite album. What's really cool about this is I think some of the songs on here are probably the most recognizable. Don't Stand So Close To Me, When The World Is Running Down, Driven To Tears. You can listen to this from beginning to end and then do it again and again and again. I had a cassette of this when I was younger and I think I wore it out more than once. I think I had to buy three of them. It's absolutely fantastic. Why I wanted to pair it with the Hanger Steak and the Chianti, I don't know. It just sounded like a really good pairing. So that's about as scientific as it gets. I hope you enjoy these. I strongly recommend trying them all together. I think it'll make for a great evening. That's all we got for now. See you next time.